Hello everyone. Welcome to Controllers Tech. This is the first video in the series, where we will be discussing about memory protection unit. There will be few more videos on this topic, and they all will be mostly the theory based. As due to the lack of proper resources, I have put together few conclusions from different documents, and I will share them with you. If something you think is lacking, let me know in the comments. I will put them all together, and release another video. So let's start with the first one today, and here we will see what is MPU, and why do we need it. Memory protection unit is a piece of hardware, which is attached to the MCU itself. The main purpose of MPU is to prevent any process from accessing the memory location, that hasn't been assigned to it. It does that by allowing the privileged access for the process in the allocated location. Privileged access means that the process can use all the instructions, and have access to all the resources. The memory protection unit monitors all the transactions, including the instruction fetching. And any violation of the access by the process will trigger fault exception. This could result in unpredictable behavior, and sometimes hard fault too. We can control the MPU with the attributes provided in the Cortex M7, such as shareability, cacheability, etc. We will cover them in upcoming videos. There are three main reasons, that I can think of, to use the MPU. The first one is to prevent speculative access to the sum memory locations. Then we have DMA limitations obviously. And the third is not a reason, but we can manage RTOS tasks in much better ways. Let's start with speculative access. Speculative access is when CPU access some memory locations in advance, and fetches the instructions or data from them, so that the wait cycles can be reduced. This accessing is done by the CPU on its own, without any provided instruction, and it helps improve the performance. But the problem arises, when CPU accesses memory locations, that are not available, like external memories. This could sometimes result in hardware fault, and we need to prevent this speculative access to such locations. There are three types of speculative access in Cortex M7. Speculative read, speculative instruction fetch, and speculative cache line fills. Speculative read is when the CPU tries to read the data in advance from the normal memory regions. I said normal memory region, and this is a type of memory regions available in Cortex M7. We will cover it in the next video. Anyway, CPU tries to read data from this location, even if the data might not be needed. It does that, so to reduce the wait cycles, and improve the performance. But if the memory location is unavailable, it can cause faults in the system. There you could see errors like this. The CPU is trying to access a location, which isn't available. We can use MPU to block the access to such memory locations. Here is the memory map of Cortex M7, and you can see the addresses from 6 million, to E million belongs to the external memories. These addresses are already available in the core, irrespective of whether the memory is available or not. So in case we are not using any external memory, we must block the access to these locations, to prevent speculation read, to external memories. Next is the speculative instruction fetch. Here the CPU fetches the instructions in advance, so to increase the performance. But sometimes the instruction is not needed, or sometimes it fetches the instructions, that aren't even valid. We could use MPU to block the instruction access to any location, and this would prevent CPU to fetch instruction from that memory location. Cache line fill means, when the processor recognizes that an information being read from memory is cacheable, the processor reads an entire cache line into the appropriate cache slot. We can make the region not cacheable to prevent speculative cache line fill. That's all about the speculative access. Now let's talk about the second major issue, and that is DMA. The DMA can't work in the cacheable regions, because it needs data coherency. 
As of now, the hardware support for data synchronization is not available in STM32 F7 and H7 series MCUs. We can achieve the coherency using the software also, typically by cleaning the cache and invalidating it. But an easier way is to use MPU to set the region as non-cacheable, so that the DMA can synchronize with CPU or another DMA. We will see more about data coherency in the upcoming videos. Another thing we can do using MPU is the task management. We can restrict any task within certain region, to prevent its access to other resources. This is a good example to understand it. You can read more about it on the source website. Basically, here the task A has been restricted to the green memory zone, while the task B is allowed to access the entire memory region. We won't be dealing with this task synchronization, but we will certainly take care of the speculative access and the DMA. This is it for the video. The next one will cover the memory types, and attributes types in Cortex-M7 processors. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.